joining us right now. It's real. He's in the jersey and uh, everything. DeMar DeRozan. DeMar, I'm Dave. That's Jason. Thanks for sitting down. Thank you for having me. Other than, let's see, how cool is it to be in the video? Uh, I'm trying to think of what's the most common question you've been asked this offseason. Probably that. <laughs> Probably that. 100% what that. I would imagine everywhere, whether it's a place like here, everywhere else. But yeah. you know what? You all and, I, and we know you've been asked that 50 million times. You also have a book out. It's on, my, uh, it's on the dresser right now. Appreciate it. It's, uh, I've seen your book tours. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen what you've been – how you've been re- – you really took a chunk out of your insides yeah. and laid it on paper yeah. for people to read. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough, but I felt like it was something just necessary. You know, I think, you know, we haven't really seen nobody, especially current players still playing, you know, kind of do something to that magnitude. Um, and, you know, I was just, you know, I constantly – constantly been trying to just figure out ways to kind of keep the you know the movement moving forward trying to break the stigma on mental health and then seeing us more vulnerable um than anything i think means means the world and i imagine by doing that one it helps you but how many people do you think you've helped by doing that how yeah. have you gotten the feedback i mean it's been amazing like it's so much that comes from it that i i never would have ever in my life imagined you know, it's, it's, I'm always surprised. I'm all, always humbled by the response that I get and hearing other people's stories. So um, it's something that, you know, I will never get used to because it's always it's always refreshing when you hear somebody that I help. I think it's interesting, too, because if, if I wrote a book, if Jason wrote a book, we're doing it to get paid because right. we, you know, aren't rich. Yeah. You're rich. That's not why you did it. There's a, a deeper, more meaningful reason. So you're making yourself vulnerable in an incredibly, you know, let's just be honest, a masculine world yeah. you live in yeah. in sports. You're bearing your soul, and it, it's not for money. It, mm-hmm. I imagine it's how much of it is a weight off your shoulders, but how much of it is, like you said, helping others. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's about it's more so helping others than anything. And even me doing this book, even after the book tour I took, I even look back at myself with a lot of things that I opened up within me that I probably wouldn't even realize if I didn't, if I didn't do the book that kind of had me even dig a little bit deeper, you know, and, um, we need that. And I hope my book did that for other people as well. So, um, it's not for money at all. I probably spent more money, right. <laughs> writing it, right. a lot, writing it right. you know, traveling, doing all the things I was doing. It was never for the money. It was all, it was always for the message that I was trying to get out there. Yeah, actually, I'm interested in the process. How difficult was it to do the book? To actually, write yeah, the book? it was it was tough. Um, you know, especially my, my summer times always was dedicated to just either my kids and working out. That's all I ever did. You know, so to kind of get out of my comfort zone in the sense of working on a book, being so tedious with that, um, going on a whole book tour, doing everything. It was a lot of stuff that was you know out my element, but it was something that I enjoyed. You know, it helped me see a lot of new things. And, you know, I just hope the message really come across and, and be helpful, not just for people, for other athletes as well, to be able to do the same thing. So, DeMar, you, you, you're you coming in. Harrison Barnes went out in the deal. And I think a lot of, and understandably, people are coming, when you're talking about the differences in the team, mm-hmm. talking about your numbers, your position, mm-hmm. rebounds, assists, steals, mm-hmm. um, Somebody said this to me a couple weeks ago. I said, you could count on one hand the people in the NBA that are on a level of a Harrison Barnes when it comes to character, Mm -hmm. and DeMar is one of them. Mm -hmm. How how important is it to you beyond the regular stats? I mean, those are some big shoes to Mm -hmm. fill, but... It, it, everybody everybody thinks incredibly high of you. Yeah, I mean, that's what you always kind of wanted in this, in our business. You know, one, to be respected as a player, and two, to be respected as a man first and foremost. And I always try to give the utmost respect to everybody I've come across. Um, and I remember just my vets, how much they meant to me. And that kind of stuck with me um, coming into the lead and, me more so always want to be that great teammate everybody could count on on the floor and off the floor more than anything because, you know, I've, I've gained relationships that, you know, with basketball in the day, got friendships that'll last forever. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day.
Who helped you most then when you started in Toronto? Uh, Jared Jack, um, Reggie Evans, um, Jose Calderon, um, Chris Bosch, even though I was, you know, my, there wasn't for a year, Hito Turkoglu. Mm. So I had some great older guys that really, really gave me a lot of knowledge on and off the court about a lot of things. And if I'm not mistaken, when you assigned here or the trade happened and you talked, didn't you talk to Harrison? Yeah, I talked to Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked about to him. Here? Yeah, about here. Um, um, he talked to me. I talked to him about San Antonio if he needed something there. Um, but Harrison definitely been a, a, a friend of mine for a while, for over 10 years, you know. So um, that constant communication we always had, whatever I needed to ask from him, it was always at the drop of a dime. Honestly, he would get mad if I didn't write, text him back in time, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, so HB, that's my man. We just got the wrap-up sign, so I guess we'll finish with this. Everybody's talked to you about fit. Everybody's talked to you about – uh, getting into the system. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you as a native Sacramentan. Have you figured out a favorite place to eat? Have you begun to get no, to know the it. city yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I, once we once training camp is over, with, I'm definitely going to do that. Are we a sushi guy. I'm a sushi. I'm a I'm a food guy. Okay. I wouldn't even want to put it just towards one okay. day. I'm a, I'm a food guy for sure. Yeah. This is the farm to fork capital of the world. That's, That's what they say. Yeah, Lots yeah, of yeah. Choices. So yeah, might be surprised. We're in America's breadbasket right here. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm a. Well, I'm gonna figure it out for sure. Yeah, help take us to the next level because this, what, this fan base is ready. One thousand percent. That's the only reason why I came here. You saw the love you got that day you brought for sure. For the yeah, first time. that was in the summer. That's what I'm in the summer. So yeah. I'm listen. I'm looking forward to it. One thing you can count on me is I'm gonna go out there and play every single night and try to win. Welcome to Sacramento. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Thank y'all.